We are joined by Owen Simmons, the Chief Executive of the Seafood Industry Council. Owen, welcome to the show. Nice to talk to you. Evening, John. Hi. Can a win-win be constructed here? Can you and the government and the environmentalists get a balancing act that will keep everyone happy? John, the facts of this, we've been talking predominantly about the Maui dolphin. As uh, has been said on the program, the range of dolphins is currently prohibited to set netting and trawling. There's been no dolphins sighted or verified outside the existing areas. <laughs> The reality is, from a fishing perspective, dolphins, Maori dolphins, are currently protected. The last deaths from uh, of Maori dolphins were, in fact, caused by brucellosis. There's only been two deaths in nets since 1988 for Maui's dolphins and since the most recent bans were put in place in 2003, there's been no okay, entanglements on Maui's. Look. Look, the, the, all of this is... Agreed. The problem is, with an estimated population of somewhere between 110 and 150, there's no margin for error, is there? And, as the Threat Management Plan from the Ministry of Fisheries says, human-induced mortalities need to be zero to reduce extinction risk for this population. In other words, the feeling from the Ministry, from environmentalists, is there can be no risk. Uh, uh, uh Fishermen are the first to want to be able to pr pr protect dolphins. Our point is that the threat management plan doesn't provide any evidence that there is a risk to Maui's from entanglement in fishing outside the existing closed zones. <laughs> Oh, and I, I guess the, the threat management plan, as you well know, looks at both Hectors and Maui's, doesn't it? Maui's Correct. is a subgroup. Right. What the threat management plan has to do is work with the current situation. They do say unequivocally 63% of incidents where the cause of death was able to be accessed across the wider Hector population are attributable to set net entanglement. 63%. Well, I th I, that, that number is not verified by fact. The numbers that are in the threat management plan is that the, since 1998, in Hector's dolphins, there's, I think, uh, 123 uh, verified deaths. 29 of them could be attributed to entanglement and nets. That's somewhere about 25%. <laughs> OK, Owen, l l I I'm going to give you all of that because I don't think this is constructive and I, I think the Ministry is going to work on the worst possible scenario numbers. So as much as you might say otherwise, I think you're in trouble there. But if I give you those numbers, what do you think ought to happen? Where well, is the win-win in this situation? Well, I think the first thing is, that, and the threat management plan acknowledges that there is a paucity of information. In terms of the hectares, which are the South Island, there's been no surveys conducted for the last six or seven years. <laughs> Okay. We think we have to do some research. Which takes time? Some, it takes time, but okay. to get some decent information. T time seems not to be, av be available. Something more constructive from your industry than more research. Well, we've, we've been very happy to work with government. We've shown that. We've put voluntary restraint areas in place where the risk has been identified. And clearly, uh, industry is receptive to doing that to get uh, measures that actually protected of dolphin butcher based on, on the facts of the matter. So at the moment you don't believe the extinction scenario being exacerbated by your industry is real? I don't believe that fishing will lead to the extinction of Maori dolphins. I think there is a number of other uh, um, factors that will, will uh, come into play in, in that situation.
And, and you guys aren't prepared to give ground at all here? Not unless it can be proven that in actual fact Maoris are threatened by, uh, by fishing beyond those areas that are currently closed. OK, the Ministry would say that is already proven, I guess, as part of the wider hectares population. You don't concede that? No, we don't. <laughs>